Hey guys, welcome to my beginner series. Um, so far we have done Mercenary, the Shadow, and the Hunter. Uh, we'll be doing the Mystic today, which is kind of like your RPG wizard uh, nuke guy. Uh, there was just a new race that was released, the Elemental, and it's all about elemental power. So I thought, hey, I haven't played this yet. <clears throat> Let's check out this new race and do the video that I want to do. So we are doing Elemental Vulcan, who has um, pyromancy. He's very fire-based. And then for Mystic, our subtype, we're going to be going Pyromancer, because who doesn't like to play the big fire dude with the really powerful nukes? Um, I like Memories from Past Life. It's a very good... I don't know what background to pick. Background you can always pick. The increased hand size is really helpful. And this is how I allocated my points. I got rid of Infernal Magic because a lot of the spells um, have the little dark symbol. Yeah, our dark type. And we aren't going with much dark for this build because all the elements use intelligence so we're just going to forsake it I probably would forsake combat 2 if it was just me because um, I'd, I'd want to play just like a mage nuke guy and not really have any combat in there but I think combat's important so that um, if you run into resistances you don't only have fire, water, air, you also have slashing, piercing, bludgeoning that you can work with. And it also gives you access to more weapons, which is which is nice. <clears throat> so this is the stat breakdown I did. Um, made sure to max intelligence. Got that strength up in case we run into elemental resistant monsters. And then in my previous videos, I said you want agility and willpower at 14. But I guess you only need it at 11. If you get it to 11, you get uh, one more AP. Maybe one more AP per turn? I'm not, I'm not sure. But I, I know 11 is the number for agility and willpower if you don't have like stats that really synergize with it. Um, I'm leaving one point left over because I have um, one mastery point from this. Mastery is when you complete the game with certain classes or uh, certain races or classes every 150 gives you one bonus LP for when you play so <clears throat> I don't want someone to run into a situation where they're like hey I tried to follow your build exactly but I don't have enough points so I just left that one left over and then for our starting gear even though we're a fire guy and so this fire grimoire would be really good I think I'm going to go with this one simply because um, one problem that I have with early mage type builds is they don't have great defensive cards. And this fossil talisman that gives us 10 charges of a stun that we can just pull from our backpack is going to be really important. And the mana stone isn't bad either for just more ways to report AP because early game you can you can have AP problems you can run into a situation where you're like out of AP every turn and you're dying every turn so you need to spend all your AP to not die every turn so it just gets into a negative feedback loop um, we are just doing gauntlet in my other videos I would do quest but I think this deck's going to be pretty strong with pyro uh, fire affinity fire affinity so I'm going to do Iron Man. I'll, I'll probably only do one stage, but, but we'll see. Maybe if I'm having fun, I'll, I'll do another two. I mean, I'm sure I'll have fun, but if I'm having... You, it, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So just Forsaking Inferno, and I think that's everything. <clears throat> All right, so first thing we do is we go to our character sheet. We see what perks we want to buy. We also have two extra points here. From our memories from past life um 
that we can't spend on anything because you can only level stuff up equal to your level and everything's already won. So let's just put it in intelligence and we'll, we'll save that extra point that we had um, from our mastery. And then I'm going to pick each one of these is for the different elements. So of course, I'm going to go call of the volcano, get my fire stuff up even more. Then go to equipment. Let's equip our stuff. I feel like this this water grimoire, even though we're fire grimoire, even though we're fire based, is going to be helpful. Uh, a lot of water cards like weaken and stuff, so so it, that can be helpful. So we'll we'll keep it. It's you know it, it is an additional option that we can choose to take. Uh, we'll go to deck builder. Our minimum deck size is twenty four cards. Um, in my other videos, I just cut it myself. I totally forgot that there's an optimized deck here or yeah, that takes you right to your minimum size. Um, and the developer wrote it in a way that it, it, it's good. It, it, it makes a lot of sense to me. Sometimes there's a little tweaking that I'll want to do. For example, it says like, whenever you apply vulnerable this turn, apply one burn. So that tells me. And then whenever you apply burn, amplify your fire powers. So that tells me, hey, I want to put in cards with burn and I want to put in cards with vulnerable. So let's see if there's any of those that it took out, like fire arrow. That's only one cost and applies a vulnerable. So we'll, we'll bump those up. <clears throat> um, the wet condition, certain, certain water spells will require, will have an additional effect if they're wet. But wet cancels burning, so we're going to not want wet cards. And then since this isn't very strong and only has an additional effect if they're wet, we, we can cut that as well. Um, Mist is our only defensive card we have other than Breeze. So I, I like rolling three of them, even though we're not really going to take a ton of advantage of the, the amplified parts of it. Okay, um, do we want to keep this breeze? If they're burning, burn two. What, what's interesting about a card like this that says burning equals burn two, it's not something that the enemy can resist. If the enemy is burning, if they have any value of burning, that value will be increased by two. So that can be good if you're against uh, creatures that are immune to your your statuses. So if we run into a guy that's burn immune, and we have a card that's inevitable, which means applies even even if something is immune to it. So we do inevitable burn. Then we could use breeze, and it would increase that burn amount, even though the monster is immune to it. So so this this can be a powerful tool. Um, and if we throw it away, we get more defense. So that seems cool. Um, so this unholy strength is, is nice. This channel fire gives burn though. Um, I, I try to keep my decks near the minimum size generally. And I like the static vault cause it gives vulnerable. Mm. So this is a little tough one. Okay. Ice arrow we can cut. This just isn't, we, we don't have good piercing cause our agility isn't great. Um, and then if we click on uh, deck, it will cut out all the cards that we've already cut that can just make it a little easier to visualize stuff. Well, hey, we're at 24 cards. I feel like this is fine. So let's roll with this. Um, one thing I did want to mention real quick for if you're new. So when you're looking at your perks, like the one we picked, um, what was it called? The Volcano. So it gives us plus one agility, plus one fire affinity, which, which is basically plus one fire damage. And then our pyromancy actions get an additional plus one damage. What, one thing that I find a lot of people get confused about, and I got confused too when I first started, is like this call of the ocean where it says hydromancy actions restore one AP. I thought, hey, this is great. All my water cards will restore one AP. But it's, it's not. Anything that says, anything that's written like this, like amplify air plus one or restore plus one AP, it means those effects get that much additional benefit. So 
this should read or the way you should read it, I guess, in your head is your hydromancy actions that restore AP will restore one more. And the same with this one, your aromancy actions that amplify your air by one will amplify it by one more. So that, that can be a important thing to kind of pay attention to when you're, when you're picking your perks. So that's enough talking. Let's, let's go right into it. I think we did everything we need to do. Okay. We got four guys. I usually like to order them in, uh, how afraid of them I are that that was a very bad sentence, but, but it will make sense. So this guy's just going to jump and not really do anything. So I'm not worried about him. These guys are just going to flank. Doesn't do damage. Um, you can, you can alt and left click to, to see specifically what's, what something is going to do. So we're going to lose, lose some defense, but, but the main thing is these guys aren't going to do damage. And then this guy, has an unknown intent. I, I mess around with mods a lot and enable them and disable them. And a lot of times it will wipe the the saved monster information. Once you fight a monster, I think just once, you'll be able to see their intentions. But the first time you encounter them, their intentions are going to be un unknown. So I don't know what this guy's doing. So he seems like the biggest priority to take out. So first thing we're going to do is look for anything that can amplify stuff this card is really good um whenever you apply burn amplify your fire magic but we don't have anything that can apply burn so we're, we're going to hold on to this until next turn i think even though it does just amplify and gives us retribution i i think we can take this guy out without popping this so let's do that for the synergy and then <laughs> Use a one cost spell that does 17 damage. And then let's save that other amplify for next turn too and fire blast him. And then let's see, what do we want to keep and what do we want to get rid of? I think it's safe to get rid of that and to toss that out. And then what's our AP regeneration? We get seven per turn and our max is 12. So we can spend two more and, and still be, or, or we can spend three more. Yes, five plus seven and, and still get back to our max. So we, we can play a little more cards. Let's see what we can get from this. Um, there was also a bunch of new uh, cards added to the elemental pools too. So there's cards that I haven't seen. Like I haven't seen this, this frozen shard. Um, a lot of new cards with the fracture mechanic. Um, does it not say it here? Okay, it says it here, which basically will lower their resistance to to a specific thing, which 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 can be really helpful if if you're like I really want to make a burn deck. Burn deck's my favorite, but I'm running into a lot of enemies that are immune to burn. You can you can put some fracture into your deck and and lower those resistances. But we're not really going for this kind of deck, but we don't have any allies here. Uh, so, sure, let's just go this one. Bam. Um, save the rest. So, vulnerable. Oh, that guy's intent, intent changed. I'm not sure why. Moves into a flanking position, he decided to attack. Maybe because the other guy was flanking, he was like, oh, I don't need to flank? I don't know, that's a little weird, but it's no big deal. Um, did we? That frog didn't. Playful, perceived action. Oh yeah, I know, we got it. So yeah, the frog, we can just play as playful leap and... Boop. He goes into our hand, and then we can play him. And uh, when he dies, we'll, we'll heal and we'll get AP. All right, so this guy's gonna attack, this guy's gonna flank. Fire burst, fire burst. And then, let's see what we can do. We can probably kill this guy. Uh, 
get rid of that. Okay, and this frog, you can either um, like do nothing and let his turn clock run down, or you could, or you could just hit him with something to get the healing and AP right away. Um, so this guy's dead. Usually, I like to see if there's any cards that I can level up before, depending on what the next node is. The next node is we get to pick a card, so that means we can go a little harder this round. If if it was fight into fight or fight into elite or something, I'd say, hey, let's try to set up our hand now for going into the next fight. But since it's not going to be an issue, we can go a little harder with what we do. So let's let's just level up our our flame. Maybe we'll we'll save one of them because that seems like a really strong card. And then I don't think anything else levels up. So channel fire. Static Bolt. Freeze. Um, and then I think, because you can change your deck on the fly, I'm going to take out these Unholy Strengths and put in... Hmm. I can sure. Let's put in more Fire Magic. There we go. I like that. Alright, so this guy's going to die from the burn. Um, then we can continue. Study. Well, we didn't get a skill, but we can sell that to a collector. All right, attack, 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 attack. Usually if everyone is attacking, then I go, okay, well, who's hitting me the hardest? Um, if you're really advanced, or I guess just moderately advanced, you will know what um, <clears throat> the monster's intentions will change to. Because if you get them under a certain amount of health, they may change to healing, or they may change to enrage and attack to different things. I can sometimes remember some of them, but... Um, it, it's more important on the higher difficulties. On the lower ones, it's not, you know, it's... You might get surprised like I did, but it's not going to end the game generally. Um, so let's see what we can do. Whenever you play Vulnerable this turn, apply one burn. Reoccurring. Imbue our cards with fire. And we lose 2 AP. And reoccurring is if it's still in our hand, play a free copy. So how does that work? If it's still in your hand before your next draw step. So next turn, we'll lose 2 AP. It will make all of our stuff fire-based. And we apply vulnerable. This turn, we'll apply one burn. Is that, is that what it's saying? Guess we'll find out. You flame conduit. We might take a little bit of pain here. Um, I'm pretty sure this guy heals if we damage him. Maybe not. Okay. Yeah, okay, so he's gonna heal. Oh, burn went on this guy because uh, we applied the vulnerable. So this is looking a little scary. Um, so I'm gonna go into my backpack and grab these. Should I grab this? Uh, I don't think we need to. Okay. Let's do the mist to reduce some of the damage. Um, then let's see what we get here. Splash to two random enemies. Well, we don't want this because if it accidentally hits the burning guy, it will remove his burning. Vulnerable and bleed. So since we have... The effect right is it here. Yeah, the effect right now. Stat is vulnerable, burn one. So it won't quite kill this guy. Maybe if we do this. Yeah, that will kill him. So, so when you order stuff, 
like how I said, I throw them to the back when I'm not worried about them. If I leave it in this order, this guy will go, this guy will go, this guy will heal, and this guy might not die then because he's healing. So you want to make sure that you, you put your, the guys that are going to heal at the end. Um, and there's a couple of other abilities guys will use where you, you'll want to rearrange it. Like if you have a guy using bene, Benefactor Flank, it means everyone, all of his allies are going to apply Flank to you. So if some of those enemies are going to be hitting you, you want the benef the benef the, the 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 guy that makes everybody flank be be at the end, so that everyone attacks you first and then they apply the flank. If he's in the front, then he's going to basically buff everybody's damage. Um, so just little things you can do. And then let's use our stun talisman. Um, if you are going to use a wrist and you hover over guys. You can see what the resistances are. And if I would have done that before, I would have seen that these guys are basically immune to stun. And so I should have used it on one of these. But that's okay. That's that's why we play on these lower difficulties. I think I'm going to drop this card. Um, you can either drag it to the discard zone or you can hold control and left click. And then I think I'm going to hold on to this Conjure Flames for the Amplify. So, take a little bit of damage there. I don't think our concealment, our our defend, blocked the one guy's damage, and then the other guy got a little damage. In. Okay, so did this work? I I didn't pay attention to my AP cost, but we did get the ripple effect again. Man, that seems really strong. So you could just leave this card in your deck. Like, leave your card over here on the side forever, and you would basically have this thing permanently. Um, and then it also has a morph effect. Let's see what that is. When it reaches level 2, it permanently gains your next action gets vulnerable too. Okay. Wow, this is like... I wonder if, I wonder if I have two of these. If I can just keep both of them over here. And it will apply two burn for every vulnerable. I don't know. This is a pretty neat little uh, race so far. Man, we have so many Amplify cards and like not really any damage cards. Let's see if we can take this guy out. So Amplify. Okay, so we're kind of low on AP again. Let's see. That'll kill that guy. Man, look at that. Look at that damage. So maybe we don't need to use our potion. I, I think I can get hit by by one more guy. Or we could just... Oh, we can't stun. He's one of the immune guy. Man, the damage just keeps getting higher. Okay, so it changed his intent to shield, so we won't take damage. Oh yeah, and then our next action gets plus... So let's, let's do that too. Okay. All right. So if we are a Hydromancer, which we're not, we're a Pyromancer. Um, this is uh, the subclass of, one of the subclasses of Mystic is Hydromancer. It, so when I first started, I thought, hey, does that just mean that I have Hydromancy? That means I'm a Hydromancer, but it's but it's not. Um, Hex Ward, Resist Crushing, or 10 Uses. If you have intuition, do a thing amplify. Okay, so I think it's the ring, unless I'm just getting something to sell. You can hover over this to see. So this I might use, and it sells for more, right? Yes, so we'll, we'll take the ring. Okay. Um, man, we don't really need any defense, huh? Um, so one interesting thing about this card too is the Im imbue fire. 50% of all the damage you'll deal this turn converts to fire damage. So that's why these are saying like fire damage, fire damage. It's it's cutting the fire damage we would do into two instances of the fire damage. Or for a card like this, it's it's doing half half air and half fire. I wish, I'm not sure if there is, I wish there was a like a powerful card or something that was more expensive 
that would just convert your spells purely to another element. So like your next card is purely an air card or whatever, because once enemies resistances and they can get pretty high on higher difficulties come into play, you can find guys who are like all of the resistances except for maybe two are like in the 20s or 30s. These, these imbue cards aren't as good as I wish they were because it's splitting the damage in half. So a lot of times that will still mess you up for overcoming resistances. But just a nitpick, I guess. Um, let's just burn them down. Do we want to just keep this in our hand forever? Um, I think we can drop it for now. Oh man, it's also leveling up the card too because it counts as playing it every time. Hmm. So we have to be more careful with our AP. This this is probably super strong like later in the game, but early game, it feels a little. Um, at least for our build, it it's it's a little pricey to basically play a free card every turn that's two AP. Whenever you apply Vulnerable this turn, apply Burn 1. It, it is a very powerful card. It is probably one of the strongest race cards that I've seen. I, I don't think we've seen a race card with a ripple effect yet. Um, well, that I can think of. But um, I think for now, we will, we will bring our hand down a little bit to that. Let's use this just to level it up. That's cool. Um, restore to AP and draw a card. Okay. Maybe we should be using that tome more to uh, begin stuff. I I forget. I, I think fire magic is like all, well, like mostly just, just straight damage. Um, water magic has a lot of weakened stuff and a lot of free stuff and a lot of restore AP stuff, which is why I like dipping into to water as well. And then air is a lot of concealment, a lot of defend. Um, you get access to some quick draw stuff later, which which lets you redraw your weapon. So I, um, I think it's it's more suited for you can make a really cool melee character with some air magic um, and stealth attacks and stuff. All right, a chest, open the chest. Um, this wooden shield is, um, I think, overpowered because you throw it, you discard it, and you get stun and cripple. So I would take this, but I, I want to take something that isn't so strong. And then here's a card that I made that's like the nerfed version of this card. So a little more defend, but when you discard it, you just apply weaken. So I think I'm going to take that one because I can use it. Oh, and then we get two. So now I'm just going to go based on selling price. So let's go with this one. Let's equip that. Oh, wait. Oh, this only goes in offhand. Okay, so we can't. Hmm. Do we want to use it over that? I think. I think I do. Instead of that. Okay. Let's just keep all of our fire stuff. Hey, there's a stun card. Hmm. Maybe we do want to keep the. Maybe we do want to keep that uh, water thing for a little more crowd control, a little more AP gain. Okay. Alright, so let's remember this guy's immune immune to stun. So this is probably the guy we want to burn down. Let's see if we can take one of these guys out. 25% um, resistant to stun. All right, it landed, put him in the back. Amplify. Damage burn. We'll die from status effects. 
Oh, fire burst. Okay, so it's gonna deal deal damage, and then chaotic damage is damage to to a random to a random target. So we don't want to use that because it might break this guy's stun. So we're just gonna stick. Let's see if we can do anything with this. Boom. So it looks like they're dead and he's incapacitated. So let's see if we get any cool water cards. Um, I'll just skip those and go next. This burn deck's pretty fun. All right, so now since he's the only one alive, we can use this and it will apply both the normal damage and the chaotic damage. And then let's save the fire arrow because it applies vulnerable. Um, our next thing isn't a battle, so I can I can go a little hard for leveling up stuff. Man, but anything we use is going to kill him. Alright, uh, I think I'm going to not hold on to that, not hold on to that. I'll hold on to that. Take the stun. Level up. Oh, we leveled up. Uh, okay, uh, we can't level up any of our skills. Well, our the one that we like the most, the pyromancy. I think I'm going to go hydromancy because I would like some cards to gain AP. I would like there. Oh, there's also heal cards in water magic, which is really nice. Um, and, it, and maybe I didn't even need to go combat. I guess we haven't really run into fire resistance stuff, and on this difficulty, it probably won't be an issue. But, um, oh, I, I wanted to save one point anyway because of the mastery thing, so that's fine. All right, let's see what we got here. Inhuman strength. Uh, probably not. These secrets... These secrets are passed down. What is it? Is this just... The willpower and resistance. Hold on, let's see. Nomad secret. Okay, so we take this one first, and then we get these later ones, which look like they're ally, ally-based. Caravan, caravan cards, and then combat cards. Okay, so probably not for our mage guy. Um, and that's that's something important too. Is uh, you also want to know what you're going to be getting later. You don't want a perk that you're like, hey, this doesn't look like it's anything special. Why would I ever pick this one? And then you find out that it is just one of the perks in the line of perks. So when I'm when I'm first learning a class, um, I'll usually go through each each of the different each of the different tabs to see how how all the different ones work work with each other this will be really nice for the extra vulnerable if we're going to build a vulnerable burn deck um we're not we don't not going to go dark magic this is nice but i don't like how expensive these guys are 25 gold is is kind of expensive they are they are really really strong cards and in, in a mode like this where you're probably gonna have trouble spending gold it's, it's probably okay um, I usually don't take it. I'd probably take this one, to be honest, just so my AP cards get plus one AP. But since we're just in a for fun mode or whatever, sure, let's let's get some hired muscle. I also don't like perks that eventually will become obsolete. You know, like this guy's great for early game, but he's not really a card you'll probably put in your deck later in the game. But, uh, hey, what do I know, you know? Oh, if we're putting him in, we can... Let's just put in one. And then we can cut something. Let's cut that breeze thing. Breeze. Okay. Oh, hey, we could put in another overheat. And... We, we really haven't casted the mist. Let's cut that. And... Hmm. 
Burning Burn 2 Draw 1. Okay. So this is actually... Hmm, but this gives plus damage, which is nice. I think I'm going to go with that. You could always go more if you want. I just, I tend not, I tend to not like to. All right, let's see what we got. All right, everyone's attacking me. Let's see, whenever you apply burn this turn, amplify. Burn, okay, let's look at their, they're not resistant to anything that we have. So let's take one of them out of the fight. Um, let's see. These guys hurt more and have less HP. So let's burn them. Vulnerable him. Or actually, let's just do this. Burn. Okay, so that guy's taken care of. Um... It's fire arrow. And then do fire arrow again. I'm kind of getting low on AP. I, I want to use this for the defend. Let's see if we can stun one of these guys. They all have the same percentage to resist it. Okay, so that guy's taken out. Let's see what we get in our book. Nothing we really want. We can we can throw this one away to do a little bit of damage, so sure. That won't quite kill this guy. Oh, it will kill this guy, okay. Um and then let's go static bolt. Fire arrow. Hey, we almost one rounded those guys. That guy's gonna die. Alright. Burning blade. All right, so I'm pretty sure we can kill these guys. Next, we have the boss stage. So we want to try to put together a hand that we like for going into the boss. And I kind of want to keep these two cards. So let's try to take these guys out. So this guy has shield. So any damage we do, we have to go through the shield first. So he has effectively has 15 HP. But if we just apply burn to him, that will go through the shield. So that guy's that guy's taken care of. Um, I want to keep the fire arrow oh, and the static bolt because they both have vulnerable which works good with our, our blaze blade so let's see if we can take care of them this way sure ice ball um, since I want to be full AP when we fight the boss I'm just going to hold on it hasn't been enough every so many rounds there's reinforcements but it hasn't been enough rounds for there to be and this gives us an extra turn to max out our ap and a few additional cards to look at um for what we want to put against the boss so can we get a card in here that can kill him doesn't look like it uh Oh, that, yeah, that applied burn because of the apply vulnerable burn because this activates every single turn. Okay, this looks pretty good to me. I think I'm going to actually drop the mist and just try to blow the boss up at one turn. See how that works. All right, what a sad boss. Only two guys? Okay. Um, so this, this already activated. I wonder if we can double it up whenever you play vulnerable this turn apply for one. So if I play this, okay, so it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't happen again. It can only, we can only have one of the effects in, in play at a time, but that is okay. So when we do vulnerable, we're still going to apply burn. I'm going to move this guy here so we can burn down the skeleton. So let's amplify. 
Amplify. Amplify. Let's just do it on him. Okay. Vulnerable. Vulnerable. Okay, we're starting to get a little low. Is he immune to stun? Oh, first encounter, unknown. I, I don't think he is. We're kind of low. I kind of want to do all of all of these. So let's let's go into our backpack. Um, it, it always takes one AP to draw a card. So it's important to pay attention to because you don't want to be at zero AP and then go, hey, I have something that can restore AP. But whoops, you're at zero AP. So ma make sure you always try to keep a little bit. So let's just grab one of those. Okay, vulnerable, 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 and let's see what we get. So now I, I'm really regretting taking combat because we're probably really not going to need it. Oh, but look at this. Reckless Sweep applies vulnerable to two guys. So we could make like a fire vulnerable slashing uh, chaotic deck. So hey, that's that's pretty nice. Pretty expensive though. Four. Oh, am I? Oh, I, I think it's it's. Oh, it's because I'm fatigued. Yeah, that's that's a weird thing. So this only costs two. So that seems really good. So let's take that. Um, I like this because we don't have any heal cards yet. So let's take that. Deck. And then what do we get in here? Gift of Fire, target ally, exhaust, element fire, draw one, burn one, throw away to cause burn. Huh. So this card we could just toss every turn to get burn, but I don't know. That doesn't really do it for me. If we gave it to our allies, though, we do have those hired brutes. It would make them fire type. Sure, we'll, we'll take it because it's a new card. It could be interesting. Um, let's see what we got here. This is the town. So we want to keep some gold for those hired brutes. They cost 25 each. So let's let's try to keep around 50. But let's see what we can sell. We can sell that. I, oh, we can equip this now. Mm, do we want to, though? It's kind of expensive. If we were a Hydromancer, it would effectively only cost one. But since we're not, I think it's safe to, to get rid of it. Um, we're not going to be using these Unholy Strengths. I don't think we're going to be using anything that has to do with Wet. Um, if this was a harder difficulty, I would definitely keep these Wet cards because you will run into guys that are just very, very resistant to a specific thing. But since this is an easier difficulty, and I just find it easier for organizational purposes to, to, to get rid of cards I don't really use. But I've realized on higher difficulties, I just keep every card. I almost never sell cards unless it's like um, a card that has an expertise that I can't use that I don't plan to level up to use. All right, so let's click off Untrained because... We are not seeing anything. Oh, and also in Iron Man, time advances by two hours every time you pick a different shop. So I have just wasted like most of my time doing nothing. But we have a little extra gold so we can rest in the end, but it, it wasn't super optimal play. But I was just curious if there was any new items added to the shop. Hey, we can pick up... Man, that's kind of expensive. Um, I guess we'll pick up nothing here. And just say, oops, we shouldn't have wasted that much time. Alright, what do we got here? Flaming Saber. Pyromancy, burn one, burn one. Deal damage. Hey, that seems pretty cool. Burn and slashing damage every turn. Um, but let's see if we can get anything we can use right now. Um, we have an offhand thing, so we want a mainhand thing. This is great. Hey, two two cost. We get a stun every turn. Um, this is great. Inevitable. 
vulnerable. That means they can't resist it, and it would work good with our our vulnerable idea. Um, sure, let's go with that. And then what armors do we have? Combat's good too, because it gives us access to some armor as well. That's pretty nice. Resist. This, this icon means all physical, so slashing, piercing, and bludgeoning will be reduced by two and two defend. No pyromancy items in here. Hey, this is really good. Sun Talisman, burn and heal. I think this is kind of a little bit overpowered, to be honest, so I'm not going to get it. One cost that you draw every turn to burn and heal. Seems like a little too much to me, but... You know, definitely go for it. Um, can we refresh or do we not have enough time? We do not have enough time. All right, let's rest at the end. Okay, Mantle of the Phoenix. So this is interesting because it will it applies the damage at the end of turn which is can be troublesome because if enemies are stunned or frozen or have some sort of crowd control effect um this will will wake them up out of it or is it is it it might be at the beginning of the turn actually so maybe maybe it's fine let's let's try it out that's that's a lot of damage for us having not even used our pyromancy. Oh, and then look at this. Pyromancy next action has burn. Um, lose burning, craft one pyromancy card. Hmm. Seems pretty good. Summon a rope. Sure, let's go with the pyromancy rank. I don't know, it's kind of expensive though. I think I'll hold off on it. Let's go to actions. And see if we can get some of those uh, AP cards out of water. I love this fire aura though. Let's do uh, don't show me cards I can't use right now. But we won't refresh it right away so we don't waste our clock. Hey, here's another heal card. It's really expensive though. Right now, I think I'm just gonna look at um, cheap cards, like cards with no expertise, which we're not seeing too many of because uh, we, we had don't show me cards or don't show me cards I can't use right now, not, not ticked. This is nice. Hydromancy. Um, if we had taken that, the perk to your Hydromancy actions restore one more AP. Then when we discarded this, we would get two AP, which which is nice. Um, so let's just refresh so we get stuff that we can do. We're looking for vulnerable. Ooh, multicast. That's a lot of money, though. Let's throw some more CC in our deck. I like that, too. That's one thing we're lacking. Ooh, that reckless swing. Yes. What else we got? Quick draw. When you play cards with quick draw this turn, minus one strain. Um, hmm. This card seems really good. One cost to redraw your weapon, and generally weapons are, are pretty strong. And this is both your, your weapons too. So if you're using like two swords, you'll redraw both of them. I don't know about this card. It seems, uh, doesn't seem like it should be a one aromancy, but whatever. Draw and stun. Sturdy rope's good if you don't have any um, expertises that have their own stuns. One cost for stun and vulnerable is solid, and I mean we have we kind of benefit from vulnerable e anyway. Okay, this is cool. Your next action gets vulnerable and it has defend, and it's cheap, but it's it's a lightning bolt. It's a reaction, so that means this would be have to be the first thing that we played every turn. 
so let's let's do it. Let's throw some CC in our deck. Uh, kind of really want to grab a fireball, but I said I wanted to leave a little bit of money for hired brute. So let's just. I think I'm gonna just use three of these. This seems really good. Nah, let's just stick with two and see what else we can get. Hey, Adrenaline Surge. That will fix our AP issues a little bit. Let's see if we can get a couple more Adrenaline Surges. That seems to be our big thing right now is we're running out of AP. Effortless, your next action freezes and amplifies water. This, this is really strong. Um, as long as you have ways to consistently draw extra cards using up one of your card you know card draws basically for something that won't use concentration and doesn't cost anything and makes your next thing freeze especially if you're like a water mage type guy that's that's really good so let's just refresh it a few more times and try to get more of those anything that gives us ap or anything that sticks out to us and we're like ooh. Um, charge is kind of interesting. Our next thing has a bunch of damage, but we gain vulnerable. And if we throw it away... Oh, we don't have Intimidate, though. That could be interesting. Intimidate pyro, Pyromancy. Let's get another Impede for the stun. Okay, I don't want to spend any more gold unless I... I, I think I want to just go for that uh, the the AP card, the one that looks like a heart. And if I don't get it, that's fine. Okay, I didn't get it. All right, so let's just tweak our deck, and then we will end this video. I think. Let's hit optimize. See what it does. Um, I think we can take the breeze out. I think we can take out this gift of fire. I like anything that amplifies. Kind of want to cut the static bolt just because it gives vulnerable, but we're not really using the wind magic. Okay. Vulnerable is nice. These these seem to be doing work. So. This has a chance to double. Double means 25% um, chance to do double damage. And this, this is, I really like the channel fires too. Ooh, and the stuns. I think we can take out the, f we either want to take these out or put them in because they mess up our CC, but they provide a good amount of extra damage. So we just, let's see. I think I want to put another overheat. Put this in just for some healing. Reckless. Okay, let's go. Hold on. Let's see all the cards in case there's any that it cut that we're like, hey, you might want that. I don't think there is. Okay, there's not. So we just have to cut one card. Uh, but, you know, I think we can just keep one extra card. I think it's fine. Let's see, deck. Yeah, I think we'll just keep one extra card. And did we get any equipment? Oh, Mantle the Phoenix. Oh, wow. Yeah, so... I will probably at least play this on my own time, but if you would like to see another video of a few more levels of it, I think that this deck is really strong. You could probably get away with this in one of the harder difficulty sandbox modes um, pretty well. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned some stuff and I will see you later.